I don't think it's quote unquote work either. I think it's a philosophy. I think it's an educational philosophy. You know, we're, we all became complicit in a system that none of us would would have designed. This year we feel like we've taken a bold move and shifted how we deliver services to our students. We are spending more time with students in core instruction throughout the day, which we feel is providing an equitable access to education. So as teachers, all of us want our students to succeed, um, but we know through living through the educational system and through our work um, through ICS, through some of the research and talking about it, that the current educational model is not equitable for all students. So ICS is helping us to look at what is not equitable and move towards making changes. Asheville City Schools is partnering with the Integrated Comprehensive Systems for Equity to better understand the history of inequities in education and to work together to increase equity and achievement in our schools. Our district's mission charges us with ensuring excellence with equity for all students and our vision challenges us to empower and engage every child to learn, discover, and thrive. Integrated Comprehensive Systems was developed by Dr. Elise Fratura and Dr. Colleen Kaplan both distinguished professors of education in the University of Wisconsin system. Dr. Fratura and Dr. Kapper are leading researchers in equity and social justice in education. Each school has created a school leadership team that is comprised of the principal, teachers, support staff, and parents. The school leadership team is responsible for leading the ICS work at each respective school site and for communicating about the work with their community. District leadership team is comprised of the superintendent's leadership team, the teaching and learning department, and representatives from other departments. Our work with ICS is organized into four cornerstones. The four cornerstones. Cornerstone one, focus on equity. During this cornerstone, staff begins a conversation around true transformation of the system to eliminate inequities. The modules in this cornerstone cover the history of a marginalized educational system and acknowledgement that the system as a whole, not individuals, is responsible for the prevention of student failure. The district's equity non-negotiables are created at the end of the first cornerstone. Cornerstone two, align staff and students. In Cornerstone 2, we begin realigning staff and students. Students are not segregated into particular schools based on a label, such as special education or linguistically diverse, but students are assigned based on proportional representation in all environments. All staff are aligned to grade level teams. Within these teams, staff share knowledge and expertise with each other to intentionally increase each other's capacity to better educate all learners. During Cornerstone 3, we implement co-planning and co-serving teams. These teams will collaborate to design differentiated instruction that is rigorous, culturally responsive, and universally designed for all learners. Cornerstone 4, leverage funding and policy. Finally, in Cornerstone 4, we will align all district policies, procedures, and funding with the equity non-negotiables. During the 2017-2018 school year, the school and district leadership teams are working through the first cornerstone. Over the course of a year, teams will examine the history of public education, learn about asset-based thinking, and examine identity development, including its impact on effective teaching. School and district teams will begin the work of examining current service delivery models and proportional representation in programming. Our primary goal as educators is to ensure student success. We can accomplish this when we consider the wide range of learners within each classroom and across all grade levels. By strengthening core instruction, supporting and building on culturally relevant, differentiated instruction, and building teacher capacity and expertise, Asheville City Schools will progress towards its goal of excellence with equity. The, the general end goal is a restructuring of how we deliver services to all of our students, but to get there it requires uh, some good background work, a lot of knowledge about how we got to this place of inequity, 
and so we've been working on learning about the desegregation the history of Asheville City Schools, how it went, um, where it didn't work, and kind of things that we can do now to still work on some of those issues. So having discussions is, I think, really important part of this work, and as we were preparing to talk about the research in Module 4, we realized that we needed some time to really talk about where we're, why we're looking at this research, kind of give the lens as to why this research is important to look at. For us, being that um, our school is named after um, Isa Dixon, who was a very prominent African American in this area of Asheville, um, we wanted to make sure that we understood the history of um, who our school was named after and the type of work that this person did for the community. Um, our staff have gathered and ran information and we shared a lot of that information with our students as well because we wanted to build pride so that they knew, like, I attend a school that's named after a person that was very prominent in Asheville. One of the things I'm most proud of is the enthusiasm of our, of our faculty and staff as we move through this process and through the modules. We've done a lot of self-reflection. Some of it you can see on the wall behind me and I've just kind of got my office plastered with these uh, uh, chart papers of, of the, the work that we have done during these faculty meetings and moving through the modules. It's helping us to reflect on the way that we might have always viewed things and helping us develop new ways of looking at things uh, and moving from a deficit-based to an asset-based mindset when it comes to how we view our students. Our staff feel like it's been really important to us to look at that history and that timeline of marginalization, both in our country and within our school and our school system. And I feel that all staff really have invested that time to better understand that this is where we were, but this is where we're going. And we all acknowledge it's a process and we're taking small steps, but the big piece um, that we're proud of is that we're moving forward and we're making change happen. And this is not just an overnight um, experience. But I do think in the long run that all of our children here in this building and the community at large will benefit. I think once we keep, uh, once we get kids from um, feeling like they can't achieve um, and we bring those test scores closer, we can see some success that way. And, and we want to disrupt the system that's been in place for so long. It's really important to us to make sure that all of our students are able to succeed. As educators, we believe that all of our kids are destined for greatness. And in order to make sure that we can bring out all the potential in them, we need to make sure that what needs to happen at school happens at school so that kids are being successful. Um, one of our fourth grade teachers, um, as a part of planning for the ICS equity meetings, um, did some interviews with her students to see how they felt about being pulled out into groups, how they um, felt about the pullouts. And some of the results were surprising to right. us. And once again, we ended up with one of those very heartfelt, deep discussions that come as a result of addressing this issue. The way it's going to play out though ultimately is students knowing that they all belong in the regular classroom with their peers and not internalizing the differences uh, that are based on a deficit model. And so we will find students, they just they know where they belong, which is in their classroom. They'll feel more capable, there'll be less divisions between them, they will not see themselves as different from the others in so many concrete ways. Well, this year we participated in more development focused on co-teaching and trying to emphasize that with students um, staying in the same classroom, teachers can come in and better serve all students. Two really tremendous shifts this year is a move to push into classrooms instead of pulling students out to serve them, and also our after-school program where we're providing an amazing after-school opportunity for students that's instructionally based but also blended with enrichment opportunities. It's causing a, um, a shift in the paradigm, if you will, among our, our staff and school community as we move through this process of reflecting and analyzing ourselves uh, to where we can better serve our student population, put some supports in place and, and, uh, and make sure that we're uh, 
that we're being as equitable as possible to all of our students. So we talk a lot about shifting our thinking and shifting our thinking how we think about our students, how we think about our families, and um, going from this deficit model of how we think about students and families to thinking about an asset way. You know, what are students and families bringing to the table and using that to build on that? I think if nothing else changes, just the way we think about our families and our students is um, one really great benefit from doing this equity work. This is a process and it's not going to happen overnight, but I'm really proud of the staff at Jones and the steps that we've taken on this journey. Um, we strongly believe that our students deserve this and we want nothing more than to create an equitable opportunity for all students. Um, they are what this is all about at the heart of it and building an asset-based culture within our school is critical to all of us. We want our staff to be very knowledgeable and know that the work that we're doing should have an impact on students for the rest of their lives. This is a necessary required work. I don't know how we don't do this. Uh, this educational system is difficult to swallow as it might be. It was not intended to serve all students and so we're just cleaning up the remnants of that is how we view it. So we don't really have a choice in this matter is how we feel at Ashford Middle. It's going to change the way we approach this whole education system. It's going to bring equity to all students so that the students that are right now not succeeding because of the way the system is working will have a chance to achieve.